standing over there listening to my own introduction. I'm actually quite looking forward to hearing myself speak this morning. <laughs> I'm quite clearly awesome. <laughs> um, let's, let's establish the fact that you're awesome as well. Could you turn to the person beside you, give them a high five and say, you are awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, nice. We're in the house of awesome this morning, aren't we? Fantastic. So as Matt introduced me, I am a behavioural scientist. It's a funny sounding job title, but essentially it means that I study people for a living. <laughs> no, just, just messing with you. So, uh, so as it, it's my profession to study people. For a, a lot of people, however, I think it is a bit of a hobby that we like to partake in from time to time. And let, let's put that to the test. Let's get a show of hands. How many people in the room like to do a bit of people watching? Yeah, so it's a bit of a universal appreciation, don't we? We like to watch people. We go to places to watch people. So sometimes what we do is we go to a shopping centre to watch people. Sometimes we go to airports. Airports are a great place to watch people. And have you found yourself at times just um, on a weekend sitting on a park bench, people just walking past, just trying to guess what they do for a living, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Ever sat on that same park bench dressed only in an overcoat with nothing else on it? No? <laughs> it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> just us in Kurumban, is it? Uh, anyway, let's move on from that. Uh, so look, as a behavioural scientist, I, I, I love to, any time I've got a group of people in front of me, I feel compelled to do some sort of observation or experiment on you as a group. So what I'd like to do this morning is I'd like to ask you four questions that I've seen an American professor, Stoltz, ask an American audience. I'd like to see whether that correlates to an Australian audience. So my four questions, what I'd like you to do is verbalise those responses. So say them out loud. So first things first, in our world right now, is our world getting slower or is it getting faster? Faster. Nice. Very good. Uh, is, our se is our world getting more simple or more complex? Complex. Is our world getting less demanding or is it getting more demanding? More demanding. And is our world getting more certain or more uncertain? Uncertain. Have I cheered you up yet? <laughs> oh, it's just a little ray of sunshine, this Darren Hill, to start the program, is he? So it's... it's if I asked these same four questions, say, five years ago, do you think our answers would be the same? Yeah. In fact, if I asked these questions 50 years into the past or 100 years into the future, our answers, again, would be exactly the same. And whoever coined that term, the human race, they just had it so beautifully correct. Because we are in a race, we're in a race to the edge. And it's the edge of our capabilities and our talents that sees each successive generation push further, reach higher and go farther than we've ever gone before. And so rather than look at these questions on the screen and consider them as just signs of chaos and turbulence, what if we were to look at these questions and see them as the single greatest opportunity that we've ever been presented? Because in our world right now, even though we move forward at this breakneck speed and we push further and faster and, and higher, is that we also know that right here and right now, the human race, we have never been more resilient, we've never been more connected, and we've never been more